London is probably one of the best cities in the world to be in in the summertime. The long days and the warm evenings make it a wonderful place to be, but it can be very hot and stuffy, very pollinated. And we think it's worse in London than it is in the countryside because of the air pollution. Yeah, the smog is quite familiar, but I didn't know there was a difference between summertime smog and wintertime smog. People are pretty good at recognising that air pollution is an urban problem and that it's related to traffic pollution. People are not aware of rural pollutants such as ozone, which isn't connected to the high-level hole in the ozone layer, which most people think it is. It's a ground-level form of ozone. It does have some serious health effects associated with it. Ozone is a form of air pollution and the reaction that generates ozone is catalyzed by sunlight and warm temperatures. In summertime, if you have an ozone episode, sometimes you may simply notice that you have a slight burning in your eyes. It doesn't really inconvenience you, but you're aware that there's something going on in the atmosphere around you. The health effects of ozone include impairment of the function of the lungs, the airways may become inflamed and it may affect the breathing, particularly of susceptible individuals, but it's also been identified as linked to mortality. And I think that, for example, during a heat wave, we would pay much more attention to the heat and most of us wouldn't know or pay much attention to the fact that there may also be a rise in air pollution. There is often a worry that we should stop our children exercising when there is pollution in the air. But of course, ultimately, exercise is a very good stimulant of health. So if we realise that ozone episodes occur from late morning to the afternoon, then those are the times when we should avoid doing our most strenuous exercise. I see the main focus of our efforts really is on trying to reduce threats of both heat and pollution at source, which means trying to design cities so they cope better from heat, the way buildings are built, the way urban infrastructure is configured, and also that we reduce pollutant emissions. Clearly there is a role for individuals as well to help protect themselves, and if they are better informed, they understand the risks and what the things that they can do to help protect themselves so much the better.